Um, so I would briefly talk about, so briefly, um, about um, the Dazna representation. Of pure brain. Um, so, what are pure brain? Well, briefly, we have um, the brain group, which is denoted DN. So, N stands for the number of strengths. So, it's defined as this. So this is the atom uh, representation for the gray group and R is relation. And so R is given by this. So sigma I, sigma J is equal to Sigma G, sigma I. For I running from one to n minus one, where I minus K should be greater than two. And the next relation is sigma I, I plus one, sigma I. This should be the same as I plus one, sigma I, sigma I plus one. And here I runs from one to n minus two. So in a picture form, the sigma i looks like this. This is how the sigma eyes look like. Okay, so what are the pure grade groups? Uh, Denoted PN. Okay, so PN is defined as this. So it is the kernel of the map, this projection map from B and into the symmetric group. So P and S generated by some element IJ with some relation again. So let's call it maybe R bar. Um, so now the Gardner representation. of PN. It should be noted that PN is a, so PN is a subgroup of BN. And we can view BN, the break group as automorphism, okay, or uh, automorphism, automorphism of uh, a free group. Here, F and is the free group. 
and the generator um, I. The next point is Fox calculus. So it's just briefly, I'm not going into details. So we have the definition B I X J acting on the group ring S N. And here by definition we, we have B X J T V of some word, let's say using equal to D U D X J plus U delta delta X J of Z. So this is the definition for um, the Fox calculus. There are some properties that uh, are satisfied. Leonard, there's a question in the chat. What is PI? I mean the pi, the like the oh. yeah. So pi is a projection map from the grid root into SN. Oh wait, okay, misread, misread what you wrote there. I I thought it meant com. I I didn't see a second dot, so I thought it was a composition. So that's why I was really confused. Okay. Um. And the and, and the I just are are product are some product of. Sigma. Okay, excellent. Can you perhaps show them as a picture to make it a bit clearer? So the A I J in picture form looks like this. Um, Some G somewhere here. We have this one. Um, you see there. It looks like this. So the, these are the generators for the PLN grid. So there's a picture of it. I have a quick question about that. Um, so the inverse of AIJ would just swap the over and under crossings with the I strand? It swaps only, it swaps only this side. So how do you get the pure braid that goes for J all the way underneath everybody and then interacts with I and then comes back all the way underneath? Um, the pure braid is that goes underneath everybody like that. So it should be, it should be um, an automorphism. It should maybe kind of rotate it. Um, it's looking from behind. Yeah, exactly. So is it just the same element then or? Um, no, but that's exactly it. I'm just looking at it from the other direction, right? Um, maybe, um, maybe if you want out directions, then they should be the same. No, no, but no. the question is, how is that other element, let's call it BIJ, right? If, if the group is the group generated by the AIJs, then BIJ should be a product of AIJs or their inverses. So the question is, how do you write it as such a product? Oh, I, 
But in terms of product, I think they are writing the same. So the AIJ in terms of um, the product of the sigma goes like this, sigma J minus. No, no, no. How do you write BIJ as a product of the AIJs? Not AIJ of, as a product of the sigmas, but BIJ as a product of the AIJs. BIJ? BIJ. Oh. B -I -J. Yes. Where BIJ is the one that Nancy described. So oh. you go behind. As, is it as a product of this? No, as a product of the AIJs. I guess my question was, you know, I totally believe you that this is a presentation for the pure braid group. I just, you know, when you drew that picture, I was just trying to think of there's like another obvious buddy where you go behind and it wasn't immediately clear to me that I could get that braid from these. But if that's a hard question, like we can move on, but I was just wondering if there was an easy way to see it. So, so um, maybe I should ask for how how should this uh, se sequence of meetings be run, and I think it should be run informally. So, uh, like if things wander, we should just wander within the direction of things. So, uh, is it okay, Leonard? So. Yeah. Uh, so is it okay? So, so really what Nancy is asking, uh, how, do you, uh, how do we know that these AIJs uh, generate uh, pure braids? They are clearly pure braids, but how do we know that they generate the pure braid group? Okay. Oh, okay. Right, and, and in particular, how can you write the BIJs using them? Okay, so uh, I, I don't know if I should take the stage or not. Uh, maybe Nancy, well, okay, no, Nancy is also not the right person to answer this because he posed the question. Should I answer or should we just continue? Uh, you could answer, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so uh, um, let me try to answer at least. So uh, suppose you have uh, you know what? Let's start with a pure braid in which only strand number J moves. Okay, so we have uh, several strands and uh, strand number J, uh, do you see me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so strand number J wanders around in some way and then since it's a pure braid returns to where it was. Okay, so what I will do is uh, before and after each crossings, each crossing, I will pull it back to its normal place going over. So in other words, uh, I will add a thing that goes like this. So you see it, it for a moment, it, it doesn't look like a braid because uh, the slope here was not sufficiently high. But really what I meant is pull it back and then bring it in again, okay? And then down here, pull it back and bring it here. And, and then down here, uh, pull it back and bring it in, okay? And now uh, if you, well, you know what? This, is, this looks so awful that perhaps I should be more careful about drawing. So let me now uh, draw it with better slopes. So, you know, I have something like this and now I left myself enough slopes to, uh, to actually work. So I will 
pull the braid back and continue. And then here, back and continue. And here, uh, back and continue and so on. Okay? And now, uh, if you look at whatever you see from here until the next time you're here. So from here until here, what you see is a generator, right? And if you look from this purple to the next purple line, so the purple lines are at the heights where I pulled J to its normal spot, right? Then what you see is again, just a generator and so on. So is the first step in this process to comb the braid and oh, then- No, I'm not combing. So it's not- after You combed it though, right? What? This would be oh, uh, uh, sorry. This is in the case, this is for if only strand number J is moving. Right. Uh, if you have a pure braid in which, I suppose you could comb and then do it uh, step by step, right? For each level separately, right? Because in each level only one strand is moving. Uh, yeah, so basically that's, that's it. Okay. Sorry, okay. Leonard, uh, you're welcome to take over again. Okay. Um, yeah. So could you take a picture? Yes, go on, done. Okay, so the last third. Um, well, we need a map that qualify from the three groups on the. So here we have XI. Into So, sorry, I mean, can you review what you said about the Fox calculus? Because I think you said it, you didn't say enough. You gave a property. So you said it's a, you said you gave a property, yeah. uh, but, uh, but you have to say what it is also on the generators, right? You, it's not enough to say what is the Oh, so yeah. Right, right. You said how the Fox calculus behave, how differentiation, Fox differentiation uh, is defined on products, but to make the definition complete, you have to also define it on generators. Ah, sure. So let me finish writing this. So, Sorry about that. That was on my end. We have Fn into uh, the free abelian group on some Ti. Um, here we take the xi into the ti. Uh, so before that, how do you on the xi? So one delta of xk of xi is the same as uh, the Kronecker delta. The second one delta on XK of, uh, let's call it some I inverse. This should give us minus of XI minus one of delta IK. The next property is this delta xj of some product um, yeah. No, you wrote enough. You just uh, wrote what it is on the generators and you also have a, have a product law. So, so that's enough. It could be extended to the the integers, so on the integers, this is oh. 
just zero. So this was so fast. Uh, so from here. Sorry, um, the last line you wrote, what is the symbol that you're applying it to? Oh, the integers. Oh, that's an N. Ah, okay. Yeah. So is this a group homomorphism? Uh, is it D? No, it, it's not a homomorphism. It's not a homomorphism. What kind of a map is it? Um, it's called, uh, is it cross homomorphism? I don't know. It's, it's okay, but it's not a group homomorphism. That's, no. that's not what it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, so using this map and the full stop loss, you can write what the representation is for EN. Um, so it's just a group morphism from PN into the general uh, the group of matrices on the Where we take the ARX into the matrix. So we first apply ARX as a locomorphism of the three groups on the generators of the three groups. And then we add the fourth calculus on it. And then send them into this. So I J runs from one to n. So we have a, a, a matrix of this one. Yeah, so this one gives you what the standard representation for the field base is. Okay, so now let's move to string links. Wait, hold on, hold on a second. Sure. I'm trying to uh, swallow what you just wrote down. Okay, so in the very inner part of this definition, you're saying ARS applied to XI. So you're thinking of A, that thing as an element of the automorphism group of the free group. So it's yeah. Move xi somewhere. Yes. Okay. And then, and so, okay, so for every i and j, this is giving me an entry in a matrix. So you're, are you defining a matrix output right there? Okay. Yes. Okay. So this so is over here. This thing is a matrix. Okay. So then I act on it by the braid, then I take its derivative, and then I change x's to t's. Yes. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I'm um, sorry, very, very quick notation on question because I really couldn't read it. What is the thing that looks like a superscript on a T, T1 all the way to T and on the top right of the board there? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, it's, so the TI is the power plus or minus one. Oh, plus or minus one. Oh, okay. yeah. Sure. So like, it would be the entire set to Involve ti over to t and and then their inverses. Uh, yes. Okay. But Leonard and so so a typical element so an entry for this matrix would look like ti minus sorry t one minus t two one minus t one so these are so 
the engines are you could have one minus two, one minus one, something like this. Those are the engines. Sorry, sorry, one, one other small question. And the map C is mapping into the free abelian group generated by a t, the TIs. So the point is the XIs don't commute, but the TIs commute, or? Yes, so this is a free abelian group. Okay, thanks. I've got another question for you. Yeah. Um, so this is really cool. I've never seen the Gassner representation written this way. This is awesome. Um, is there an obvious way to see from this definition? And maybe there's not, if this is a hard question, ignore it. But I know that there's problems with maybe like dimensions of the vector space or something. If you try to do this for the full braid group, not just the pure braid group, is there a way to see from this definition why you can't just do this same thing for the pure braid group? Because the braid group is itself a subgroup of the automorphism group of the free group. Um, is there a reason, like, can, do you know why this definition doesn't just work for the, the whole braid group? Um, I don't know. I, I should be able to work for the so when we change all the t's to t, uh, if we just replace the ti with t, then I think we should move into the representation for the uh, braid group. I don't know if that's what you're asking. I mean, well, is that just the bureau representation? Yes. Okay. So so why? So I mean, it seems like at every step of this process, we we didn't necessarily need a pure braid. Like instead of putting ARS, I could have just put sigma R. Yeah. Um, like even if I leave the TIs as TIs, but I but somehow something doesn't work, right? Am I right? That it you like you get like an infinite dimensional representation or something. Let's say uh, are you referring to say we put in some the generation of the of the braid group? Yeah. Oh like uh, George, do you know why? I don't know. Yeah, I probably do, but I have to organize my thoughts. Okay, we can move on. It's not an important question. I was just wondering if there was some like obvious thing that to see why it doesn't work for the whole group. Yeah, I haven't thought about it. Yeah, actually, I was also thinking about myself. Um, so. From the bureau representation, um, why the person decided also to use a TI? Well, but yeah. So, and that's, yeah. Um, again, I'm, I'm to, to answer Nancy's question, Nancy's question. So, uh, Again, I, I haven't organized my thoughts and I cannot give a, a, a perfect answer, but an, an, an imperfect answer is, uh, right, we are, we are using somewhere uh, the automorphisms of the free group that correspond to uh, a braid. Uh, these automorphisms uh, send every generator to a conjugate of a generator. Uh, if it's a pure braid, they send every generator to a conjugate of itself. If it's an impure braid, you might be sending a generator to a conjugate of another generator, okay? So in fact, the, the, the generators are permuted according to the permutation underlying the braid. Now, uh, 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 Leonard used at some point this map phi from the free group to uh, the abelian group uh, generated by the TIJ, by the TIs, okay? Uh, so 
uh, somehow impure braids. Well, okay, this uh, phi is in, phi maps conjugates to uh, phi is invariant under conjugation, right? Basically, phi is an abelianization uh, map, or it, so, so, so it kills uh, conjugation. Uh, so uh, uh, corresponding to the action of the braid group on the free group, there will be an action of the braid group on the TIs. And it will be the identity action if it's a pure braid, but a permutation if it's an impure braid. So uh, the uh, so so you do have a Gastner representation for uh, impure braids, except it will also permute the TIs. It will not act only on the XIs, but it will also permute the TIs. Or said differently, it will not be linear over. Uh, the ring that uh, uh, Leonard uh, wrote, namely GLN of uh, the TIs. I mean, linear over that ring means that it keeps the element of the ring fixed, but it will not be linear over that ring. So if you want, it, if you want to think of it as a linear representation, it will only be linear over Z, and then you'd have to make the ring a part of the representation space, okay? And then it is an infinite dimensional uh, representation. But I, I, I said it, you know, I'm not happy with the way I said it because I didn't have enough time to organize my thoughts, but there is truth in what I said, nevertheless. So the point is you will still get a map into like, we can still write down this map. It's just not gonna be an appropriate linear map that we'd wanna say is a group homomorphism or like is it- Yes, it, well, the representation you will get will not be a, rep well, will be linear, but over a smaller ring. I see, it, ah, excellent, that was very helpful. But, but again, I, I, you know, there is truth in what I said, but I, I'm not happy with how I structured it, but sorry. Okay, uh, yeah, Leonard, go on. Okay. Um, so, what are string links? Well, I would call them L. So, in a picture form, Um, so the, this is how I mean an example of a uh, string link. Okay. So the strings are allowed to so they are not mon a monotonic as in the case of braid braid groups. And I should mention that files B N. And so let's L and B. Um, the collection of N string links. And over here, I should mention that we are dealing with the pure string links. 
to the permutation of the indices. Here, uh, it's just the identity permutation. Um, so from here, we can put this into the solid cylinder. Let's call this so the solid cylinder is D two times I. So the bottom of the solid of the solid cylinder is a disk. Let's call it X zero and the upper part X one. Let's call X equal to D two minus plus I minus the string length x. So here is just a complement of the string length. Uh, once we take the complement, um, the x0 would be x So this is from a topic to the wedge sum of the S1. Wait, um, sorry to interrupt, I'm really confused by what you just wrote. Is that approximate or like homomorphic to like what? What equivalence ratio are you trying to show? This is there. Uh, this is a homotopy equivalent. So you take um, a disk minus point. Okay, so you would have a picture like this with holes in it. Yeah. And this is the same as. So if you put a point in the boundary, it will look something like this. So in this case, there are four holes. So bouquet of... Um, Can you explain to me how you generate, let's say, one of the four of them? How to generate this? Yeah, how to go from the first diagram to the second. I'm really confused where they come from. Oh, if I have this, you could... So this are holes, okay. And you can... I mean, push this inward towards the one hole. It's kind of um, taken from the. You remove endpoints and you want to. So they are, well, um, These are one dimensional stuff, but this is a two dimensional with holes in it. But then you want, it, it's sometimes helpful, helpful to write it this way if you want to compute the uh, fundamental group. I don't know if I'm. If so, I like you expand the, so, like you expand the holes to the boundaries, the cell board we're yeah, getting at so with the. With, the okay. Yeah, pull everything onto the boundary. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Or maybe a, a case, so this case might help. So if you have maybe a disk and you move a point from it, you can just pull it onto the circle. Okay, if you remove one pull, okay. just, you can just pull everything to the circle. The boundary of the disk. Okay. 
Are you taking a picture? Uh, yes. Okay. You can go ahead. So a string link is just a pure tangle or a tangle with no closed components whose underlying permutation is the identity? That's another way to describe it or? Yeah. Okay, thanks. And I should mention that LM is not a group, unlike PN. So let's look at the Gardner representation. Wait, why is it not a group? Can't I stack things? Uh, come again. Uh, you said it's not a group, but can't I stack them in the same way it could break? Yeah, I can stack them, but then um, th there are no inverses when, when you think of. Um, mm -hmm. I still talk to you. Ah. Cool. All right. One more question. Sure. Um, maybe this is totally irrelevant, but uh, since we're no longer like limited to monotonicity, like couldn't I take the endpoint on one and an endpoint on the other and like swap them? Or I guess like is it built into the information that I know which are my starting endpoints and which are my ending endpoints? Is that like built into the, the link? I don't, could you maybe rephrase it? Well, so if, if I just like drew some crazy tangle uh -huh. with N components, um, there would be, you know, and, and it's so, and, but there would be lots of choices for how I would choose where they start and where they end. Uh -huh. So I'm just asking like, do we know, like, is it part of the information of the tangle that like, here is the starting position and here's the ending position? Uh, because like that's sort of implied by a braid, but without the monotonicity or yeah, if we throw away monotonicity, there maybe could be multiple ways of doing it. Uh, okay, so here I should mention that we are just looking at pure braid, pure string length of pure, yeah. Oh, that wouldn't be pure. Mm. Ah. So, so the the the, big, the end points are fixed. Let's say yeah. you fix you fix points one up to n in the disk, and these are the end points, and they're fixed. They're the same for all string links. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so with this, we, can see that we are going to find a, a group from a, a homomorphism from L and into um, the general linear group. So how do we deal with this? Well, we would have to use cohomology. I should say maybe the representation of the actual homology. And here the cohomology we are going to consider is the cohomology uh, with the coefficient being local. So it's local coefficient. So that's what I mean. If we take some map from the fundamental group of X, so here X is the, the complement of L. And P should be a point in the boundary. So here, let's say we call this P0 and then P, or just P, yeah, it should be in the boundary. into here again the three abelian group
let's call the generator xi here again. So xi goes into the pi. Um, then how do we see the cohomology via this thing? So the change will be defined by so here by definition we mean the form of so I would explain what F means in a moment of F into C N of F. So F is not the quotient frame of S. Leonard, I have a question about the epsilon map. Yeah. Um, is it clear that there are n exactly n generators of the fundamental group of the complement? Oh, so if, if, if we have n strings, then mm -hmm. oh, okay. So maybe that's how I should start it. And I rushed a little bit, so but we take this into um H one of H one of X of Z. Here you have this is equal to Let's call the generators again xi. So the xi's are the meridians around um, let's call this x1. So this the thing around this would also be x0. Sorry, x2. Um, I think that's exactly my question. Maybe I just haven't thought about it, but uh, like in the picture you drew, why would there only be two generators of the fundamental group? I guess that's not obvious to me. So you're claiming there's one per strand. Is that the uh -huh. um, Because what the next step you're going to do is when you go to homology, you're saying abelianize, right? Yeah. That, so that's only I should say that there are relations. There could be some relation. Mm -hmm. It's not strictly a free group. So, yeah. And here we are taking the. Yeah, we have been, uh, uh, the abelianization of this pi one. Yeah. And this would be the same as so maybe I might morph it in P I so uh I guess the only way I know how to get the fundamental group of a complement is the Verdinger. Uh, yes, yeah, using the Verdinger for the Okay, and, but the Verdinger for this is going to give me more generators, I think, than just. Uh, yeah. and right, so but all generators along the same strand, in other words, all the meridians of the same strands are conjugate to each other. This is the Wirtinger relation. Mm. So, I mean, it follows all, all immediately from the Wirtinger relations that if you uh, move the meridian along the strand, you, you only move it by conjugates. Ah, uh, okay. So, after. And after, and after abelianization, the difference between them disappears. Ah, uh, so we really do just get one per strand. Ah, yes. okay. Ah, thank yes. you. Okay. I see.
Oh, I think I cleaned up something. So let me repeat it. So I said, let um, CK be the chain. Okay, let's call it F. And by definition, we call this H. Oh, oh. So this are the co-chain complex and we take the home of the chain complex. Um, so here F is the quotient ring. So That's the quotient term for Z of Pi plus or minus one. And so, so over here we have to, so the chains are on some covering space of X. And then so over here, they are over G. And then we just have to fix them into X. So how do we define the representation? So here we have a definition. So one, a string link L. So we apply. Uh, the automorphism that's called it gamma of L from H1 of X0 uh, first of all let me write this into I zero minus one H one of X F and I will continue from here I one H one of X one F into H one of X zero. F. So what are the maps I one and I zero? So they are just the inclusion of so I zero will be the inclusion of this into X and I one is the inclusion of X one into X. And this is an isomorphism. So you should remember that X zero um, X homotopy. So homotopy to the west sum of one to n of X. 
and this is this one. So this would be a nice morphism. Okay, let's call it F. So the Dogma representation for the spangling would be gamma from Ln into Ln minus one H one of X zero. So over well, here, the reason I'm writing n minus one is that uh, the dimension for this is n minus one. Okay. The reason being that this is a cohomology with local coefficients. Okay. And for what? this, we call this. I have a quick question. Uh, yeah. Uh. I haven't thought about cohomology in a very long time. So there's like covariant functors going on. I'm a little bit confused at the indices. So when you wrote gamma of L, the first one, excuse me, is X zero. The second one is X, the second term, the H. So the, the very first term is H one of X zero. Yeah. The next one is just the X. Yeah. The third one is x1. Yeah. And the last one is x0. Yeah. OK. OK, thank you. Um, following this part. Yeah. Cool. I, I forgot that you have to like reverse the arrows. I haven't thought about it in a while. And so I was like, why is the middle one an x and not an x1? But I think I got OK. So oh, may I suggest something? So, uh, Leonard, we interrupted you many times, and obviously you're not going to be uh, able to complete everything that you prepared. Yeah. So let's find a natural place to stop. Yeah. Sure. In a, in a minute or two, in or in a, in a small number of minutes, and then I want to say a little, a few minor things, and and maybe this should be continued some other time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I should say that this is the Dazda representation. Um, so, I should qualify it with a D. For L, for the strong leg L. So without a review, then this would be, so we need some extra things. Okay? We have to take um, a related homology with respect to this piece. Um, so where would we go with this? Well, it's known that the Gaza representation for the pure grade group, uh, um, what, what was the name? So the Gaza representation for the pure grade group are unity. And the same can be said about this. This is unity as well. Um, yeah, and there's an other nice way to compute what the Gaza representation for the string links are. And that also uses uh, the two uh, group for homology and fourth calculus. And here I should say the fourth calculus is not the same as the one we saw. But then it's related via one full cycle. Um, yeah, so maybe I should end here. Okay. So, um, yeah, maybe we should uh, clap hands, but then I'll have some comments. Yeah. I have a question before the comments. Sure. Um, so maybe this is just, I, I'm old fashioned technical, but I'm not sure what representation means here if Ln is not a group. Like, so we've written this map that turns links into matrices, uh, but it's not a group homomorphism, right? But you were right before that there is a multiplication, so it's multiplicative. 
Oh, so it's like a monoid homo it's, it's, it's a monoid representation, if you want. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Um, okay. And it's known that this is unitary? Is that what you said? Huh? And you said it's known that this is unitary? Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's unitary. Cool. Yeah, uh, with respect to some uh, matrix. Mm -hmm. Very cool.